Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Now today guys, I'm going to be repotting my tiny little Echinopsis subdenue darter cactus plant. And this common cactus is often known as the sea urchin cactus or the domino cactus because of its gorgeous little little fluffy white areoles like spots resembling a domino <laughs> and this as you can see this plant here is looking a little bit yellow and it's been desperate to be repotted all through the summer and the reason why I haven't done it is because as you can see there it's got a big juicy seed pod on it it has been in bud for many months since the beginning of the spring and it's now autumn now and um, I didn't want to repot it while it was in bud and of course then it had a wonderful flower. I pollinated the flower, cross-pollinated with our other Echinopsis cactus plants that we had flowering at the same time. And I'm pleased to say it's formed a wonderful seed bud. Um, as you can see there, that's the fruit and when it's ready to harvest I'll make a video. But this probably won't be ready to harvest, probably, possibly even until the winter, possibly even into next year. Uh, because the seed pod can take many months to be fully ripe and you'll know when it's ready to harvest the seed when it feels soft and um, squidgy this is very firm and still very dark green so this is still maturing and echinopsis um, seed pods can take sometimes only a few weeks to mature but it can take months so it's really no way of saying i personally think this is very i'm um, getting very ripe fast so i think possibly in another couple of months if not less this will be fully ready to harvest and i'll show you when i harvest the seed but this plant obviously because i've not been able to repot it because it has been in bud and then flower um and I'll explain reasons why. Now it's the time, now it, the, the seed pod has formed big enough, it's not going to be damaged in any form by repotting. And the reason why I wanted to wait until I'd, um, the, the, the flower had fully matured and the seed pod, before it got to a stage where it's big enough, is because if you repot a cactus when it's in bud, um, and certainly when it's in flower, the, the bud can fall off. And Echinopsis flowers are very, very sensitive. They do, you know, you get some days of sunny weather and the buds will develop and then you need to get a day or two of overcast weather and the bud will fall off. Or if you move it from one slight angle to another, the bud will fall off. It's very common. So they are very, they're very sensitive. So I wanted to, and if I'd have repotted it when it was forming the bud, it would have definitely dropped the bud. So and as you can see, that's the result of the lovely flower and the pollination. But, but it's looking a little bit yellow. But other than that, the plant is, the plant is healthy. Um, it just needs fresh soil and it needs uh, more fertilizer, which will be in the soil. So um, that's what I'm going to be doing today is repotting this little guy. I've chosen the next size pot up as you can see there so I'm going to be obviously just putting the soil in the bottom putting it in and I'm going to be showing you how to do it and by the way guys I've already made a video on how to repot a cactus and if you haven't seen that video then do check check the links up above to that video on how to repot a cactus I show you two very spiny examples one round bowel cactus and one more of a tall taller cactus so two different varieties this one is very easy to repot there's no spines it's very softer and a little woolly areoles it has actually got spines in the areoles um, and if you want to know what an areole is by the way a few people say what the hell are you talking about Lynn this is what these little tufts are here I'll just show you a cactus with spines so you know what I'm talking about here yep this is a good example <clears throat> this one here has um, spines and that's an areole where the spines come out of if you don't get spines you sometimes get tufts or you get papery uh, spines but that's the difference between a cactus and a succulent but that's another video again and if you want more information on what's the difference and how to grow cacti and succulents do check out my website at desertplantsofavalon.com and links to my website again are in the, the description in, in the about section on this video so do go and check it out lots of care tips on how to care and grow cacti and succulents do check it out guys and um as I say, I'm going to be repotting this here. And if you also, I've got the cactus mix here. I'm going to turn the t turn this down so you can see what I'm doing here. Yes, yeah, so you can see what I've got there. There you go. Now, I make my own cactus soil because it's far more economical and I like to be in control of what I put into it. A lot of the commercial cactus mixes aren't very good quality. They... Um, they usually just have a load of horrible cheap fillers in. Plus I'm not a big fan of peat based soil 
um, which a lot of the commercial ones do. Peat isn't the worst to use for cacti. The two big problems I have with it, three big problems. One is it's often, um, t it's not environmentally friendly, um, unless you know where the source it's coming from, a lot it's taken from parts of um, <clears throat> the world, particularly here in Ireland where it's not environmentally friendly. And also it tends to attract a lot of them annoying fungus flies. Um, as lone based soil doesn't so much and also the fact that it dries out very fast which is good for cacti but the problem you've got is in when you're giving them their winter rest and you go to water them again in the springtime that it's peat based soil is very very hard to rewater and the salt the water just comes straight out of the pot and you have to keep i usually have to submerge and soak any plants that have got peat on them to, to really thoroughly soak up by using loam and you can still mix a bit of peat into the loam if you wanted to by using a, a a predominantly loam based soil I find it, it's better for hot water retention and what I do is add extra either extra perlite or extra grit one or the other with extra horticultural sand um, to a loam based soil and this gives plenty of aeration and well drainage too and I like to use um, a John Innes loam based soil but any loam based soil will work and it really everyone has their own preferences when it comes to cactus soil there's no right or wrong um, it's just that I prefer to use this and if you want to know how I make my own cactus soil and if you're interested in making your own cactus succulent soil links also up above to a video on how to how to make your own cactus and succulent plant soil in three easy steps and I share this recipe recipe it's not I know you don't eat it but you know what I'm saying the, the ingredients in that video three equal parts of um, grit, sand and loam based soil. In this case I'm out of grit but I've used perlite to substitute the grit which is lighter as well um, than grit but it's all down to preference. And then um, <clears throat> a pot then and what I'm going to be doing is literally putting a little bit, a little bit of soil in the bottom there <coughs> at a couple of, couple of inches or so. Now when it comes to repotting um, and I do mention this in how to repot a cactus video. It's best not to go to from this size to a massive big size. A lot of people think if they can pot their, their cacti in a large pot it's going to grow really really fast but usually end up the plant can rot because they don't like to be in too much um, damp soil and you can say well cacti grow in the ground in the natural habitats they're not in pots so the, you know massive pot why should it make any difference. The difference is the natural habitats they dry out quick but when they're in a pot, they're confined in that space. So if I was to put a very, this into a much larger pot, and I, however careful I was with the watering, um, it could still rot because it's not going to dry out fast enough. And even in the middle of summer, cacti do like to dry out in between their waterings. Now, this is a, is a ceramic pot. So normally with a plastic pot, I'd squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it. But in this case, I'm going to have to sort of give it a bit of a, bit of a knock and um, gently that that's come out really easy actually so that's good um, I just gently push it underneath it's got a big hole underneath as you can see that was easy enough and when it comes to repotting on I always think the least you can touch the root system the better because it is very fragile and they can be very prone to rot I normally wouldn't ideally be repotting sort of at this time of year in the autumn it's not particularly harmless but Spring and summer is always the best, but in this case I'm going to be keeping this, this cactus now completely dry, in other words the soil dry, I'm not going to give it any water now, until the spring time. So it should be okay as, even though I'm repotting now, if I'm putting it up into dry soil and I'm going to be keeping it dry. Now check the roots over, check there's no signs of mealybugs or damage. The roots on this, as you can see, as a, with a lot of cacti, are very small. This only has a small root system, so it, to put it in a massive pot will be stupid and encourage rot. And I just want to check that, um, that the roots look pretty good. Now they are good, they're not too compact, so the roots aren't all crammed together. Um, Echinopsis, as in this one, the, the sea urchin cactus, is a little bit trickier than I personally find some cacti. Now, some growers would say to keep the soil damp slightly so not damp during the winter time they do like perhaps a little bit more moisture than some of the other desert cacti and um, the problem and that is actually true by the way if you're growing them indoors or you, you're in a warmer environment where we live here in Ireland I mean Northern Ireland which is damp cold in the winter and because we're keeping it cool in the polytunnel I'll be keeping this bone dry the soil until the until the um, following spring but ideally they do prefer to be given a little tiny bit of moisture during the winter in on the 
in the soil. But as I say, I choose not to because I'd rather have a, a cactus that's slightly shriveled and alive than than uh, dead with, with root rot because here it's just too damp here where we live. Um, now I'm going to be putting a bit of soil all around the edges there and be careful not to knock up that lovely juicy seed seed pod. Isn't it gorgeous? And by the way guys, all cactus fruit is edible. Um, it's very tiny and you can eat it if you really know interest in growing the seed and you have fruit, you can eat it. But bear in mind if you're using bug sprays and insecticides and all the rest of it, like modern uh, growers would use, then I wouldn't really recommend eating this, the fruit because you don't know what, if it's really going to do you a bit of harm. I know it's no different probably to a lot of fruit and vegetables now that's grown with all pesticides and everything. Um, but as in this case I only really use pure neem oil. Um, on the plants and also rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol to remove any insects so it would be fine but I'm not going to eat this seed pod, I'm going to um, harvest the seed instead. I wouldn't get much of a, a, a meal out of it anyway, it's so tiny. <laughs> I'm just going to check how this is looking on camera so you can see what I'm doing there. Oh yeah, that's great. So uh, gently tucking, tucking the soil around the, around the little cactus here. And as I say, this is going to be kept dry. And it's in a well-drained soil, so <coughs> with a bit of perlite as well for aeration and a horticultural sand. And Echinopsis cacti, there's such a massive genus that, you know, it's not a case of one size really all fits all because now some of the serious type of cacti like Trichocereus, which are the tall columnar cacti, also fall into the category of Echinopsis now. But in general, I'm talking about the, the, sec the Echinopsis that are the bowel type of cacti that... Um, commonly are most commonly seen in garden centres they're very easily available and they're very easy to grow as I say the biggest challenges I find with these sometimes that you might get a bit of um, where the roots die back and then I just pop them up again and I think the reason why I have a bit of root die back on these type of cacti is because I do keep them totally dry over the winter which I still would recommend if you um, grow them in a damp cold climate um, as I do. If you grow them in the house and overwintering them in the house slightly warmer I would probably still give a little tiny bit of water throughout the winter um, just enough to stop the plant the root hairs from shriveling really but um, as I say it's a very very difficult when it comes to like I'm getting questions all the time from people asking me about their plants and I just don't have the unfortunately the time to reply to people when I feel really bad but it's often because you know, it's not an easy question to answer. Um, you know, if somebody says, how do I water my cactus? Well, then you have to get back and ask what type of cactus they've got. And it can depend on so many different factors. So guys, if you really want help with your plants, um, please do check out my website, as I've mentioned earlier, desertplantsofavalon.com. And the link's in the description. I hope it will help you out. And I just wish I had more hours in the day and more time to personally answer all your emails and comments and everything like that and I get a lot of messages on Instagram as well asking people asking me about their plants and I so wish I had the time to reply and help people and I'm somebody who I'm very conscientious I you know I love to reply to my comments and messages but I know it's not I'm not physically able to and I do lead a very very busy life <laughs> I'm uh, doing so many things at the moment I'm a student also doing horticulture and everything like that I just I just haven't got enough time and this obviously my YouTube is my passion and um, there's only so many hours in the day but I just want you to know even if I don't reply to any personal messages and that please know I do read them and I, I really do send love back um, I really do appreciate them thank you just wish I was there at the time to really reply to everyone but I hope you think it's not because I'm bad um, and there you go guys anyway waffling on and there you go, that's it all potted up, isn't it gorgeous? And now what you can do is just gently tap the sides of the pot just to get the soil um, down there in the sides. And you don't want to press it really hard down, you just want to tap it down because you want the roots to um, settle into the new pot. And as I say, normally when I repot a cactus anyway, even if it's the height of summer, I would never water straight away, I leave it for a few days, ideally about a week or 10 days just to allow the cactus's roots to um, acclimatise to the new soil and then I'll start watering it as normal um, and in this case though because of the time of year it's autumn now I'm going to keep this dry as I say and this won't be getting any water now until the following spring so guys I'll just turn it around so you can see me all again so I can see you all I should say 
I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, thank you so much for all of your support and your amazing comments. You really are amazing, guys. And um, I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of plant power. As always, from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye. You can see that's the old flower head that's died back and that's the lovely hairy juicy fruit pot.